Hello everyone and welcome to another Power episode of I Am Panther Presents. Today we're going to be talking about book three, Raising Canaan, what I think about it, where it could go. But before we get into all that, again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please comment on the video and we will respond in a timely manner. As always, before we get started, I'd like to thank the people that make this channel possible. And those are commenters and viewers such as uh, we got RJ billing uh dial tone 21 stacy land uh reina j uh jeremiah lutumba uh apple of his eye and jersey for real Th thank you to you and all the other people who comment and share these videos and help us get to 175 subscribers as i saw yesterday so thank you very much for all that but let's talk about where power is going power never ends as they say and now as we move forward with book two and Tariq we're gonna go backwards in book three with Canaan okay what is his backstory how did he become the man that he is so any prequel I believe falls into two categories right I think they all basically they're predictable because you know how it's going to end because they're temp because they're going backwards and therefore a prequel usually has to meet where the original material started if you're a star wars fan you know that you know the star wars series started with episode four so episode one two and three got you to four okay so and like and then you have a problem a lot of times that they add stuff to the backstory because it wasn't written like that originally and if you think about it a lot of times the backstory doesn't add up with the original material happened in terminator happened in star wars happened in underworld uh that movie series and like i feel i'm worried that kanan is going to fall into that category that they're going to want to expand the kanan you know storyline that is not going to make sense when you, when you think about what we know about kanan for starting in 2014 with power starting okay or again the ending is predictable because you know what happens to certain characters okay already so for example so in this story right they have two options okay the most intriguing option would be how did the story of Kanan mentoring Tommy and Ghost in the drug business that's probably the, the most likely or at least probably the one we'd be most interested in right so how much time do they have to cover? How much stuff do they have to put in that story? Well, based on the on the dialogue in the book one, that's basically 1996 to 2004, okay? That, that's the time frame where Ghost and Tommy go from 15 to 23. And in that time frame, that's when Kanan, Angie is gone, Ghost and Tommy are introduced to, uh, Kanan introduces them to Breeze, and that's the eight years where Kanan and Breeze are working with Ghost and Tommy to show them the drug game. Because in 2004 is when Kanan goes to jail, okay? Um, and because he's in jail for 10 years, and you know that because in 2014 when Power started, he, he had been in jail for 10 years up until that point. So you back that up, and then you know, in, uh, based on the end of the series, that in 1996, there were both, uh, Ghost and Tommy were both uh, 15, and Tommy tells Ghost, hey, Kanan's about to introduce us to Breeze, and then Angie's about to go. So that's the math, okay? So two, 1996, 2004, from 15 to 23, they could do a show about that. They could do a show of Kanan mentoring Ghost and Tommy to the game, but you know how that story's gonna end already, right? Tommy and Ghost kill Breeze, and then Ghost and and a uh, Ghost and Tasha send Kane into jail. You already know that. So what's the real surprise in this show? You know for a fact Kane is not gonna die. You know for a fact that Ghost and Tommy aren't gonna die. You know Breeze is gonna die. So therefore, any other characters that they bring into this really doesn't mean anything in the big scheme of things okay because none of these uh, new characters which are going to introduce is mentioned in, in book one so i'm like why you know what i'm saying like why do we, there's no there's no like oh my god i can't wait till next week to see what happens to so-and-so so-and-so is probably gonna die because you don't know who that person is already you know so that's a problem with any prequel and that's gonna be the problem with this prequel okay so then you say, well, maybe they're not going to cover that time frame. Maybe they're going to cover the time frame was Kanan was coming up himself, okay? And right before he meets uh, little James and, and, and little Tommy. All right, that's more, they got more room to work with, but then why would we care? Again, 
He's probably going to meet a whole bunch of people that don't matter, except for Breeze. He's probably going to meet Breeze in that section, and Breeze matters. But everybody else really doesn't matter. And you know that Breeze and, and Kanan are going to be all right, because they have to ultimately meet Ghost and Tommy, and you know their destiny. So... How much, and again, how much interest or, or surprise can you have about a prequel? Any prequel. But so anyway, that's my thoughts. So let's talk about other characters. All right. So again, let's focus on the maybe plan A, 1996, 2004. All right. At that age, again, Ghost and Tommy are about 15. All right. Sean should be about one years old. So Kane and Son should be about one because at the, in, two, in 2014, when the show starts, um, Sean tells somebody that he was, he told, he told Ghost, he's like, I was nine when my dad went to jail. So from, from 1996 by 2004, that would make Sean about nine years old, just in time for, for Kanan to go into jail when he's nine, right? So you're going to see a, a, a toddler Sean. At some point, you're going to meet Tasha. Um, according to Ghost, uh, he met Tasha when he was 24 and she was 19. So that's probably going to happen around 2004. Uh, and then very quickly, she she convinces Ghost to send Kanan to jail. We In that prequel, we might find out why Tasha hates Kanan so much. Because she really hated Kanan, okay? In fact, as you find out in book one, originally Tasha told Ghost to kill Kanan instead of just sending him to jail, okay? Which kind of brings me to another point of conversation. Why didn't Ghost and Tommy kill Kanan after Kanan helped them save Tariq, okay? Because even Kanan said that. So when uh, Kanan kidnapped Ghost and said, we got to go to go help get Tariq away from Jukebox, and Kanan said, why'd you send me to jail or something like that? And then Kanan was like, you know, I loved you too much to kill you, so I, so I sent you to jail. And then Kanan said the same thing that Tasha said, which was, you should have killed me then, or you wouldn't be in this situation right now, okay? So... He didn't kill him in, in, in 2004. Why didn't he kill him after they saved Tariq? Because if you remember, go back to season one, Kanan was responsible for all the shit that Ghost and Tommy had to deal with in season one. Kanan's the one that hired Pink Sneakers who totally wrecked Ghost and Tommy's organization to the point that they were arguing, they were fighting with each other about what to do about, about whoever's hitting them, right? Uh, Pink Sneakers killed uh, Annabelle, the fat dude, cut his throat, okay? Then, through their investigation, Kanan got uh, uh, Pink Sneakers and other people to convince Ghost and Tommy that uh, Ruiz was behind it, and they're about to go kill Ruiz, okay? And then, ultimately, Ghost, you know, calls Kanan in jail, okay, asking him for, for mentorship, and then Kanan manipulates Ghost into killing Rolla. And killing Rolla was a major event in the whole series, really. That was the only murder that Ghost ever felt bad about. That was the first time he cried, you know, before he cried over Angie. But he cried when he had to kill Rolla. He actually drank alcohol. That was one of the first times you saw him drink alcohol in season one because he felt so bad. And even Rolla told Ghost, Kanan is, is causing you to do this. The only person you would believe that would say, I'm, I'm the one who did it, is Kanan. And Ghost is like, Kanan's my friend. He wouldn't do this to me. He's saying the same thing that Tariq says at the end of the series when Ghost is about to kill him. And he's like, Kanan wouldn't do that to me. You know, see, he loved me. So they were both fucked up in the head over Kanan. You know what I'm saying? But killing Rolla stuck with Ghost for so long that he was seeing it, seeing uh, flashbacks of that. The next episode, remember when he was running and he's trying to run like away from the idea that he killed someone he mentored, you know, someone he loved, you know what I'm saying? So in, se in season two, once uh, Ghost figures out that Kanan was behind all the pink sneaker shit, okay, back fast forward to when they say Tariq, Ghost should have killed Kanan then. If not for sending pink sneakers to destroy the organization, just for killing Rolla. I mean, he should have been like, I'm killing you because you caused me to kill Rolla. Kanan should have dropped then. And Tommy should have killed Kanan. Because in season one, Tommy says, if we ever find who's doing this to us, we're going to kill him. But yet, once you get to season six, okay, and Tariq and, and Tommy are putting Kanan's ashes to the wind... So fucking Tommy is sitting up there missing Kanan, like missing the good days. Like, did he fucking forget what Kanan did? Like, did he forget everything that happened in season one? Like, that didn't make any sense. I'm like, K 
Kanan tried three times in this series, three times to kill Ghost and Tommy and take over their business. He did the same thing over and over and over again. I'm like, how in the world is anyone mourning this dude? You know what I'm saying? I don't even understand that. You know? And again, I think if he wasn't the executive producer, they would have killed him off for good the first time Ghost tried to kill him. But he kept on coming back. And now he's going to be a ghost, you know, to Ghost, as he was to James, and obviously to Tariq. I'm pretty sure in book two, you're going to see Kanan pop up every once in a while on Tariq's head. But again, they should have killed him. And they would solve themselves a whole lot of problems. Rolla should have been, should have, that should have brought Rolla back. Like, that, killing Kanan, Ghost should remember Rolla, and he should, and Ghost should have seen Rolla standing there or something. And then that would be the moment. Like, he sees Rolla right here, and he's like, why should I kill Kanan? He sees Rolla like he saw Angie and, and Raina, and he puts Kanan down. That's how I would have wanted Kanan to go out, and that would have made some sense, okay? But also, let's talk about things that don't make it. Let's talk about Shine, okay, real quick. So again, Sean is one years old. If they do the prequel, looking at Ghost and Tommy's rise under Kanan, Sean is going to be one. That means Sean dies at the age of 19 or 20 in book one. Okay, so a couple things. Why was Tasha his point of contact when, he, when, he, when Sean was killed? Why not his mama? Like, why did he put uh, Tasha down? They weren't a couple or anything. That was kind of weird. Also, Sean didn't even get a funeral. I'm not saying everybody needs funerals, but Sean should have had a funeral. That, that death meant a lot to the family, a lot to, to, to Tariq. You know what I'm saying? And, that's, and killing Sean was one of the main reasons that Tariq ultimately turned on Kanan when he, when he got him set up and killed by the cops. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, to have a, go, a moment. And then you can see Shane, um, Shane, uh, Sh uh, Sean's mom. Like, where was Sean's mom? All you saw her, you saw her once when Kanan came over and got some, and then she calls uh, uh, Kanan looking for Sean, but you never hear about her again. I'm like, your son is dead, that don't get addressed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it would have been cool to see, like, Sean's mom come at the funeral, and you know I'm saying, they talk about it, you know what I'm saying, they try to figure out who did it, and then, and then later on, I mean, they find out, you know, that ultimately, you know, Kanan did it, you know, but anyway. That's, a, that's another problem I, I had with that particular uh, storyline. But anyway, so are you gonna interested in watching Kanan since you know how it's gonna end one way or the other? Either they're gonna cover, uh, again, they're gonna cover Ghost and, uh, and Tommy uh, working with Kanan from 1995 to 2004, or they're gonna cover the time right before he meets Ghost and Tommy, okay? One of those is gonna be it. How long is this thing gonna run again? Um, What's their end game? What are they trying to set up for the future? Um, this, yeah, this may be a way to introduce if, if uh, to introduce Mary J. Blige. Like maybe you're gonna find out in book two, Mary J. Blige says, "I used to roll with Kanan and Ghost," and you know, Trick is like, "Who? What? How is that possible?" So maybe somewhere there's a younger Mary J. Blige in the Kanan backstory, and you'll see why she's relevant. You know, to the to to the to book two and to the future. Maybe that's a thing. I don't know. But, see, yeah, so that's it. So, again, what are you, you going to watch it? Um, which spinoff are you most looking forward to and why? And uh, what do you think, what do you want to see happening in the Kanan spinoff? You know, who, what characters or, you know, what, what storylines do you want to see develop? What questions do you have about, oh, Omar Epps. I'm sorry. So, Omar Epps has already been cast, right? So, then my wife said that Omar Epps is going to play Kanan's dad. That don't make any sense because when Tommy and Kanan were talking about Teresi and Tommy said, hey, you know, I, I, I found out who my dad is. Like um, Kanan was like, hey, man, that's great. I never I never knew who my dad was. So, you know, you guys should you know hang out and go play baseball or some shit like so he didn't know his dad. So if, if Omar Epps is going to play his dad, how is that going to be a thing? And then Kanan's supposed to be narrating. You know, I heard she said um, uh, Kanan's supposed to be narrating the prequel. Okay, how's that start? You know what I'm saying? And are we seeing the truth? Or are we what happened in Kanan's life? Or are we seeing how Kanan saw it? You know, like how and, and maybe the rosy picture he wants to paint of his past, sort of thing. So that's also, you know, thing. But anyway, as more casting comes out, we'll talk about it. As we get more information about when it might start, we'll talk about that too. But again, thank you very much for supporting the channel. Thank you very much for supporting power. Um, I look forward to your comments and we will discuss this some more. Bye.